my dad purchased the bar in 1971. I got involved at an early age, helping clean up and sleep around. At that time, I really enjoyed the underground punk rock scene, indie music, alternative stuff. When I took over, it was kind of rough area still. We had the blood bank next door. We had a lot of homeless people on the street. In about 1995, I started bringing in live music and it picked up momentum right away. So I brought in promoters. I brought in a lot of bands that I wanted to see personally. Now it's evolved into what it is now with a lot of uh, hard rock bookings, a lot of punk rock bookings, a lot of uh, underground indie type bookings. So we became very popular. I don't know why Vice LAPD was giving me such a hard time. Uh, first they claimed that it was my, a permit issue. There was a lot of people standing outside. So when pe new people started moving in, their claims were that they had to go across the street or they walked on the street to avoid the cluster of people in front of the bar. At that time, they were coming in on a nightly basis. And on a Friday, Saturday night, 20, 30 police cars in front of the bar, which ultimately scared away my promoters, scared away a lot of customers. I was not able to book stuff in advance. I was only given a month, which made it even more difficult for me. Thankfully for a lieutenant there at police commission, we got it all resolved. It was more of a, us being targeted by new bars, new restaurants in the bank core that felt us being a threat taking away their potential customers. We were strong and overcame it. Thankfully for my wife, she really told me, you know, don't give up because I almost did. So when I went through the ordeal with Vice, when they finally approved of my entertainment permit, he actually told me, be wary of booking hip hop, be wary of booking metal, be wary of booking punk rock. And to me, that's being stereotypical. To me, that's not how I run my business. What keeps me afloat? The band, the patrons, and my staff. About 10 years ago, he's like, why don't you come Come and cook for me. I'll build you a kitchen. I was miserable at my job, and I said, perfect. So I started doing burgers, because I figured, you know, I worked at In-N-Out when I was 16 years old. They taught me everything I know about making a good burger. Mine are better, and I will make, next time you guys come in, I'm gonna make you a burger, okay? For sure. So come hungry. So we set the buns down first, because they, they have to get nice and toasty. When somebody comes in and just wants to start trouble, that's probably my worst thing about my job. And my daughter worries about me because I have a big mouth. I had this one guy come in here one time. I couldn't get rid of him. I've never even told Mark about it, so I'm going to tell you. So he comes in and it, it, just acting up, and I told him to leave nicely, OK? Probably 6'5". So I gave him a freaking karate chop in the freaking stomach, and he went flying out the door, landed on the sidewalk. <laughs> I had maybe five customers in there, and they were like, yes, you rock. Got tomatoes. We got the cheese. Got my salt and pepper. That's it. That's all I use. So I get a patty. All during my high school years, I didn't eat meat at all. My first burger, God help me, at McDonald's. But now I love meat. Nothing frozen ever. Ever, ever, ever. I just recently started doing uh, grilled cheese because I get a lot of vegans here, but they don't know that the cheese ain't vegan, so I haven't had any complaints yet. I've been nominated a couple times for Best Burger in LA, but you gotta have the dough to win. It's all about corporate. They're, they're, you know. One day I will reign as the queen of LA, but as of now, I'm happy where I'm at. Very happy.
So that place is completely filled with ghosts. We had some ghost hunters come down here. Searching for these um, beans, picked it up right away. Went upstairs, oh no. Uh, there was, something went on up here. There was some gambling going on upstairs and somebody got killed and he's still up here. A gentleman was burned alive up here. I've seen him from the bottom of the, right in front of the stage, all along the staircase, all you see is these faces. And at the very top, there was this man. He, had, he must have had a head, must have had a head like this with like kind of like a, a mustache with a gigantic beard. He was, it was huge. So my name is Adam Nodler. I've been investigating the paranormal now since I was in high school about 14 years ago. I first learned about Five Star. Somebody on Facebook contacted us about the place and saying that the bar owner, Marco, I was saying that their bar had paranormal activity. You do get a presence of something going on. Um, a well-known psychic medium, Harvey Altas, he's been on a few paranormal programs already. Uh, he contacted me and he's like, what is this, like, what is this about a fire? Like somebody died in a fire or something? brought more equipment with me today so we can gather more intel on the bar. Okay, this is Adam. I'm here at the upstairs of the Five Star Bar. My bartenders won't come up here. I love it up here. I, I get like this sense of, uh, of uh, peace when I come up here. So they don't, they don't mess with me. They just like to play. Was there a message that you wanted us to know about? Faster. So the other day, I'm in the cooler and I'm stocking up my fridge, and out of nowhere, a bottle of PBR comes flying at me. Not anywhere near it, like, just hit me in the stomach, out of nowhere. Do you hear that female voice say my name? Listen to this. Okay, this is Adam. I'm at the five-star bar right now. In the... Okay, nobody out there knows my name. It's very, it's not crowded right now. Or are you here against your will? We've been filming here for a very long time. Starring William Conrad. The latest was uh, the Lady Gaga film. Angie told me, you know, I just busted Dave Chappelle stealing beers from our cooler. They filmed the Fight Club there. They went downstairs, they took them downstairs. My doors are always open for them, whether it's Warner Brothers, or a film student that has minimal to no budget. I always work with them. Me and Marco have known each other since high school. We've been We've together. We've been together for like 21 years. <laughs> we have our, our ups and downs in, in, in business. We've had a, a lot of struggles um, many years ago with vice and our landlords and so it made things very very difficult stressful it affected our relationship quite a bit but ultimately it made us stronger because uh, we bonded and used us as a base to hold everything together we spent a lot of time together here and, all the time and uh, for the most part it's, it's lovely it's very positive i love this man I've known Angie and Marco uh, for longer than either of us would probably care to admit. Uh, I was here so much, I just uh, asked them if they could use another hand. I've also become a part of the family with the sound man, and the other bartenders, the promoters that come through here.
My name's Skunk Chalabek, and I'm a promoter for Five Star Bar in downtown LA. It's such a small bar, but I think it's big enough for what we're doing here, and it gives a sense of exclusivity for the shows that we throw here. I brought a bunch of cool punk rock bands from like Youth Brigade, The Vibrators, DI, JFA, a lot of good times, had a lot of beers. I'm legit, I have my ticketing services. I set that up, make bands feel like, you know, wow, you know, there's tickets for my show. I, li I like to do that for big bands and for small bands, because I know what it is to come from a band that came with nothing, you know, and having like, labels don't want to pick me up, you know what, I got to pick myself up. So that's what DIY is about, doing it yourself. The honest truth is that it takes so many different people coming together, and that's what punk's about as well. It's not a one-man show. Throwing shows, people think like, oh, is he doing it for the money? But if you know anything about punk and punk shows, there's no money in it. So you can't do it for the money. You gotta do it because you know, you're passionate about it because it's not easy. It takes years and years. It took me 15 years booking all these bands, whether local or major. Like tonight, we got some cool bands. Destruction Made Simple, who I go way back with big history with them and the fiends are here tonight too and from a band informal society informal society has a very long history and it started off with some members some had drug addictions and those members were no longer with us so we quit for a couple of years it's been crazy since it's been a hell of a ride and it's far from over so I'm Raul, I'm the singer of Destruction Made Simple. We've been around for about 20 years. We started off as uh, teenagers and now we're dads. So it's a pretty cool ride. The first time we performed at the Five Star Bar was it's a great vibe. Uh, a lot of people go to Hollywood and you get they see the glitz and the glamour. But hey, this place right here, this place has it. Let's give it up for Skunk for fucking keeping the five star bar up and going. And for the five star bar to stay. So my name is Dave, and I'm from The Fiends from Echo Park. Yeah, we play early American hardcore style punk rock. How I got into punk rock myself was um, I'm the son of a preacher man. So I grew up, you know, in the church and where I learned how to sing. Pop rock entered my life when I was about 12 years old, listening to like DI one day after church and suicidal tendencies with a cousin. It said, uh, we're gonna go to hell for listening to this. But um, discovering it at that age was the most true form of uh, art and words that I've ever encountered in my life. And years and years later, it still is. We go! We go! We're not thieves and we don't sleep! Where punk is at, where it's going, is it dying? It's one of the music genres that can evolve. It's something that religion and politics need to do as well, but only music is able to do that. If you would ask me if punk rock's dying, it's not. If you ask me what my first punk rock band I've ever listened to is, it's N.W.A. because they were against the government. They were against cops. They kind of woke me up socially. And then from there, I started listening to uh, Public Enemy. And then suddenly, somebody said, hey, you like Public Enemy, listen to The Clash. You know, and from there on, bad religion. So, lately everybody got mad at Krispy Kreme because their great-great-grandparents fucking supported the Nazis or Mussolini or somebody like that. Hey, if you guys are pissed at that, you don't know the history of LA. Why don't you go down to the Eastern Cemetery and start looking up all those big sepultures and see what those fucking families did to fucking L.A., how they fucking choke a lot of fucking co communities around here. Look up the Guasti family who have connections to fucking Mussolini. This, this, this one's called Eastern Cemetery. What keeps me going, what keeps me playing live shows, I guess for us it's a lot of social injustice these days. People tell me, look what Trump is doing. 
We wrote a song about Trump 20 years ago. People weren't listening. We warned you guys about Trump. And it's kind of like our time to vent. Yeah, I've been singing in pop rock bands for almost 20 years now. Three years into that, I thought at this point, there would be no point of me singing in punk rock bands, still fighting for change, because I thought at this point, in 2019, we would have flying cars and everybody would get along. But one day I woke up and there's this orange motherfucker who is our president. We live in a world where things maybe haven't turned out the way that we want them to. At this point, it's like, what am I going to do? Sit back and do nothing? And maybe I don't make the biggest difference in the whole world. But the point is, is that we don't give up. We keep on trying. We fight for what we believe in. Not just about punk rock, but for everybody in society. Why do I have a bat now? Well, there's Nazi supporters now that show up to shows. Ah, uh, geez, I don't know. Anybody that's uh, alt-right, hey man, don't think that all liberals were all passive and you know, we're gonna zen you out. No, I'm gonna whoop your ass. That's what I'm gonna do. Punk was very prominent when I was growing up and it was crazy big. I mean, he had everybody all decked out, mohawk, punk rock bands forming left and right. I've always tried to stay on that level and to try to be a part of that. You got venues like the Allen Theater, um, the Knitting Factory, um, you know, Safari Sands, all of those clubs closed down and countless others, you know, because punk, it, 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 it just, it goes like that. Whether it's people taking a shit in the front of the doorsteps or having sex or getting crazy, one thing or another always ends up shutting down a club. And I'm thankful that, you know, nothing like that has caused Five Star to shut down or anything. Five Star Bar is a dying breed. A place where you can still get a beer for $5 in downtown LA. It's an authentic dive bar in the United States. It's a vanishing animal. And I feel like it's kind of a mission to preserve what we have here and keep it alive. And, uh, you know, maybe preach to others if they should try and save the same sort of niche cultures and location. I, I think, like, it's a real credit to Five Star to support the movement of punk rock and, most importantly, like, idealism and art and supporting it in every format. Like, that's really what is going to make the biggest difference, that we can all be ourselves and express our ideas like freely to each other and the world. And that's why I'm gonna go on stage and fucking kill it. Good job! Losing it out! Losing it out! Losing it out! We're not losing out! Yay!